Hey everyone, welcome back to Nerddom. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be talking about Avatar The Last Airbender again, but this time, the animation. I was just able to finish Book 1, Water, over the weekend, and I did have a lot to say. I think I have a lot to say. I know I may be the minority here where I saw the live action first, and then I saw the animation. So I may have a different perspective that someone else may have had because they were able to watch the animation maybe back in the day or more recently. With that, I do think this falls into the rule that I usually have, that animation is just better for this type of storytelling. I usually think it works better with comic book stories, with stories like this, because it just fits better with the aesthetic and it fits better with the powers. I do believe it is cheaper to make. It's easier to suspend the disbelief because CG animation with live action people does take a lot to get past the uncanny valley. So with that, let's get into it. First one I wanna talk about is the pacing of the story and the length and the time that we have with the characters. Now, while the live action may be eight hours, we do have 20, 22, I believe 20 some odd minute episodes with these characters. And that is a lot more time that we have with these people. I think, if my math is correct. So we get to see them have a bunch of adventures with the Fire Nation, with Prince Zuko, on their tail the whole time. And other entities that are trying to get after the Avatar, I guess. And other side missions, such as Jet with the Freedom Fighters, and other stuff. Which is great because you get to see more of the world, you get to see more adventures, rather than everything being squished up together. The Jet episode really did mean a lot to me because it talks about how the people of the enemy may not be enemies. You know, the, it has like the, the old man of the Fire Nation, but he's an old man and he's just living his life. Everyone's kind of caught up in this battle and Jet is going to basically demolish all of these innocent people these people of this society which is a great question to ask you know when in war against another nation are the people the enemy they can be they can be any of them can be a possible infiltrator enemy terrorist per se but is that the way to conduct oneself during war and to keep the moral high ground and that was a really great question to ask and i thought it was very mature for an animation for a cartoon to do. Which is another thing to kind of talk about is the maturity of it. Um, Aang is not as a curmudgeon as much as he is in the live action. He's very joyous. He's what, 10, 11 years old? So we see him being just a straight up goof. But at the same time, he does have a lot of wisdom because he is trained by the, by the air monks. And Aang is a completely different character. He is much more likable and he has much more screen time since he's the main character of the story versus, again, the live action to compare. Maybe I should stop comparing. It seems like he kind of takes a side role. Speaking of which, it is so cute to see Katara and Aang's little back and forth, you know, will they, won't they? It may just be kind of a trope and I don't really, I would kind of know that they hook up later at the very end and that they are an item. But it is just so cute to see those two kind of like each other, but not like each other. And it's just so cute. <laughs> and that's something that we again miss in the live action. I don't think they touch on that at all. I could be very wrong. Let me know down in the comments if I'm incorrect about that. Katara is able to have this little crush on Jet. And of course, Sokka has basically the same amount of crushes that he does in the cartoon. But we get the time with these characters to grow into, and we actually see their attraction for each other and how it does make sense. You know, they're our friends, they're a close group of friends, and we see them building that relationship. But at the same time, there's a little bit of attraction between Katara and Aang. So I'm not sure why Netflix decided to kind of keep that out but to then change some other things such as like the Earthbender nation's capital backstory or you know have other relationshipy things and just to talk about the animation itself it does start kind of choppy 
I noticed, I don't know if it was underfunded or maybe the first couple episodes were, you know, just the beginning per se. It does, I think, either smooth out or my brain just processed it different later, but it is still beautifully done. The character designs are awesome. The acting is awesome. The story is really good too. I can absolutely see why this is kind of held up as a important or legendary series. And I can see why Netflix kind of wants to make a little bit of a buck off of it. And Nickelodeon for sure. I guess there's only so much you can do with reruns. The other cool part to talk about was Aang actually learning how to waterbend and that he is supposed to be figuring out how to bend all the different elements. That's something again that we missed. He has to learn about all the elements to become the avatar and the story, I'm not, the story episode, oh my god, the episode where he learned to firebend just a little bit, that episode was so awesome. You see an outcast firebending master training Aang and he is, no, he's saying, I'm not going to train you because you are not ready. You need to learn water earth and then fire because fire is destructive fire can not almost not be contained you need to contain yourself and again that's just a really cool story beat for ang being too overzealous too hasty to get into what he is supposed to be getting into he think he can do he thinks he can do it just fine he thinks he can do it easily He's all throwing out flames everywhere, and then all of a sudden he hurts a person that he personally loves. Which is exactly what fire, <laughs> what the, the, the story of the fire powers is, is. And that's why it was such a good lesson to learn, and thank God Katara learned how to water heal. I don't know about that one, but I'll let it go, I guess. But I was like, man, that's really smart to start the cinder on the leaf and for him to control the burn that is the whole point of the fire it is it is a destructive force so you need to learn how to contain it now i would say fire isn't only destructive you can have beautiful creations from fire including metallurgy that kind of thing there's there's things and then of course you have electricity that somehow is made i don't understand it static electricity maybe is fire something something lightning makes fires maybe so i don't know if you can harness that in the future i don't know anything but that was really good lesson for this character to learn and it shows again how slowing down the pace how increasing the amount of episodes and the, the amount of stories really is beneficial to characters now again are we having this format because it is animated are we having this format? Could we have had this format in a live action form? Would you would you even need to have the live action thing if you were just going to copy it anyways? Is it just pure hubris on the writers of the live action show thinking they can take these themes, mush them all together and then make their own thing? A lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. But with that, I do think animation in this regard is better. It is absolutely better. The timing, the characterizations, the powers are all cool. The character growth that you see, you're on this journey with these characters and it takes a long time to get through it. So it is just an overall better storytelling method, better pacing, better everything. And I can absolutely see why a bunch of you guys love it. <laughs> and I'm happy to be watching it. So we're on book two now, a couple episodes in, and I'm gonna continue my watch of this and I will let you know my thoughts on book two and three. I am very slow to getting up to date on this. <laughs> but yeah, not much more else to say about that. I don't know if it's just because I'm tired or there isn't really much else to say, but it is a very good story. It's a very good characterizations and yeah, just better. Weird, weird how that happens, huh? The original. Also, I saw that Dave Filoni was the director of a bunch of episodes. I can totally see some Filoni-ness while watching The Clone Wars now looking back from this too. It's, it's pretty telling and I hope that Dave kind of leans back into his storytelling methods of early years. Now he wasn't a writer, he was purely an animation director or show director. 
So maybe that's where he needs to be versus writing sometimes. I'm not sure. I know there's some Dave fans that are going to attack me now. So yay. So yeah, that was just my simple thoughts on book one. I'm definitely going to continue and let me know down in the comments if you want to see my thoughts on book two and three. And if not, I'm still might make the videos. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe. Also hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithms. If you didn't like the video, I thank you for watching this long and hope you have a great day.